am one of the school counselors here. Um, we are so, so grateful that you guys are here tonight. We know that there are a lot of different things going on. So thank you for making some time uh, to come out and learn a little bit about things going on um, during senior year. We have got Sam Mullins here. He is a wealth of knowledge uh, for all things relating to financial aid, Tennessee Promise, all of those things that you start to hear about and have tons of questions about. Um, we are definitely going to be respectful of y'all's time. So that being said, we're going to start um, with Mr. Mullins. He'll talk with you guys, hopefully answer your questions, um, and then we'll end with a brief PowerPoint um, from us just about senior events as it pertains to Lebanon High School students. So going over some important dates, some important things that are coming up that we definitely want to put on y'all's radar. Um, so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Mullins, and um, that'll be great. Hey, everybody. Glad you guys are here tonight. We've got lots of stuff to cover that's important, and I just want you to feel comfortable. There'll be a time, not necessarily at the end, but I'm going to stick around for a little while afterwards if you do have some questions. Um, we're talking about financial aid tonight, which is awesome, but it's also a little strange for some of us because here's the deal, okay? Our sons and daughters, for you, those of you who are parents or guardians, are just starting their senior year and we're talking about college and money for college. And that seems kind of soon, but the way things work, well, I'll explain it to you. Go ahead, Austin. This is who I work for. I work for the Tennessee Student Assistance Corporation. It's a government job. Pretty much, I am financial aid for Wilson County, for the whole plateau. I've got 19 counties and 126 high schools, okay? That's crazy stuff. But I love my job. They introduce me all the time as the money man. That does not mean that I have any money. And you'll see why in a minute. Money for college is crazy, okay? Whenever we have a new president, we always talk about in debates and things like that. How are we going to make education more affordable, all right? Gravity would tell you what goes up must come down. College tuition has no relativity to gravity at all. College tuition never comes down, it never does. In fact, in the last 10 years, college tuition has doubled, so how are we gonna figure this out? I'm gonna show you tonight, there's some things that you will see. This is my qualification, right here, for financial aid. I've worked for 11 years in financial aid for the government, but the reason I know about financial aid is because I am a father. Okay? In fact, like if you were sick, you wouldn't want to go to a doctor that says, well, I'm not a doctor, but I do play one on TV. Right? Because they can't help you. I am a dad. In fact, that's my wife, Christy, and I in the middle. We have seven daughters. I don't care who you are, that's funny. Okay? I live in an ocean of estrogen. That is my life, and we have three sons. <laughs> if I did not know how to find financial aid, we would live in a van down by the river! Yes, we would, because I'm telling you, I know some tried and true secrets to finding money. And because I've had to do it, I put six. <laughs> there have been six of mine that have gone through or are still in college, okay? Top row, that would be MTSU, Tennessee Tech. TCAT, UT Knoxville, MTSU again, UTC, bottom row, Cumberland, and Ball State. The last two are still in my house eating my food. All right? So let's move forward. You're going to be seeing a lot of things as a senior that look like this. Do not stare at this too long. You will get sleepy, okay? These are all kinds of acronyms that seniors are going to have to experience and understand. As we look at things like COA, that is cost of attendance, all right? Let's move on down, FAFSA. Now in a group this size, some of you, this is not your first rodeo and you have filled out a FAFSA. Can I get hands for anybody who's ever filled out a FAFSA? Was that fun or what? <laughs> like, dude, shut up, that's not fun, I know it. I know, people stand up there all the time and they say, well, they've made FAFSA really easy. No, they haven't. It's hard, but we're gonna help you, all right? So let's move on. What I wanna concentrate is this area down here, okay? Go ahead, Austin. 
grants, scholarships, and loans. That is financial aid. When I'm talking to you about financial aid, that's what I'm talking about. Grants, obviously, is money that's given to your students. Keyword, given. Based upon their families, you guys, financial need, okay? Scholarships, obviously, we know what those are. Free money given to your son or daughter based upon a merit, their brains, or a skill that they possess. Music, art, athletics, things like that. Loans is the last one, and it is financial aid. In fact, every one of your sons and daughters that fill out their FAFSA will qualify for a student loan. They will, okay? But here's the thing. We want to try to avoid student loans if we can, all right? I will tell you, right now, for eight years in a row, student loan debt is America's highest form of debt. It is number one. That's freaky, isn't it? See, it used to be credit card debt, things like that. They started offering personal finance classes to your sons and daughters. We used to be enslaved to credit cards, but now student loan debt is number one. And I will tell you this, just speaking from Tennessee alone, the average student graduated in 2017 from UT Knoxville, $27,000 in student loan debt. So what we want to do is try to make that not happen to your son or daughter, all right? We have something coming up, and it's the reason why the awesome guidance counselors here wanted me here this early. Because September 16th through the 20th, or something like that, that week, they're deeming it College Application Week in September, okay? College Application Week is very important that we're doing it then because of this reason, deadlines. Did you know that there are financial aid scholarship priority deadlines at all of the colleges and universities. And if you miss that deadline, if you apply too late to college, somebody else is gonna get your money. And you don't want that. If you qualify for it, you don't get it because you've missed the deadline. Okay, that's why we talk about this. Parents, it was not like that for us. It was very different for us, okay, when we were in high school. In fact, if you had a DeLorean and you could go back in time, when I do this in high school, it's usually students go, dude, what's a DeLorean, right? Okay, but if you could go back in time, back to when you were in high school, my senior year of high school, <laughs> I don't care who you are, that is funny, all right? Do not be alarmed, ladies and gentlemen, that is a mullet, that's what that is, okay? Yes, that's an awesome mullet, too. I was only going to college if my band didn't get a record deal, okay? I just wanted to be John Stamos. We all know that was the best mullet ever, right? Uncle Jesse, it was so cool. Here's the thing. That boy was clueless. And I thought about applying to college, my backup plan. I don't know what the what. I'm not going to college until August, so I should apply to college in July, right? Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> Oh, God, help us. Seniors, not 65 or older, please. You guys, all right? Okay, 65 or older is good, too. You guys can't do that. So College App Week is very important that we start applying to colleges so that you don't miss deadlines. Let me just give you some crazy ones, all right? You want to major in engineering, you want to go to Tennessee Tech, one of my favorite schools, all right? That priority deadline to apply is December 15th of your senior year, right now, December 15th. You wanna to go to that big orange school in Knoxville where my daughter graduated from? I have a son named Peyton who's 19, do the math. We're Vols fans. Here's the thing, November the 1st is their priority scholarship deadline. November the 1st, wow, okay? Do not wait till Halloween to put your application together. So just know these things are important. As we look, I'm gonna show you guys different ways that you can find money. Here's the four sources. First one, of course, is institutional. The second one, when that's money from the colleges. The second one is the federal government. That's the Pell Grant, all right? Third one is the state of Tennessee. I have a lot of money for you if you stay in Tennessee. And the last one is miscellaneous and local scholarships that you will find through these awesome guidance counselors that are here and some other sources that I'm gonna tell you about tonight. One more. 
Here's the thing. I put an X over state because the only thing you can't do is use the Hope Scholarship at Western or Alabama or anywhere across the state line of Tennessee. Guys, it's recycling at its best. Basically, it's this. Tennessee scholarships for Tennessee schools. It's recycling. But it's how it works. Now, if you live in a bordering county, like maybe Sumner County is, okay, they will waive you out of state tuition, but you still cannot take Tennessee scholarships out of Tennessee. All right, let's move on. Let's keep going. One more, Alston. Let's talk about FAFSA for a minute. Some of you who raised your hand, this is a picture of you. <laughs> because FAFSA freaks people out. But let me just tell you, here's how FAFSA works. If you are graduating in May, all right, the FAFSA that you can fill out, and let's just talk about that. What in the world is a FAFSA? It's an acronym. It stands for free, keyword free, free application for federal student aid, okay? And everybody that goes to college now, it is mandatory that they fill out the FAFSA. Even if you have a full ride scholarship, they need your FAFSA information to disseminate all of the money that's going to everyone in the college on scholarships. Because you could qualify for money from the government, which would save that college money for another student. See what I'm saying? So everybody has to fill out FAFSA. And I'm going to show you the money that your sons and daughters and you seniors can get by filling out your FAFSA, all right? FAFSA is going to look like this. If it doesn't look like this, if you see somebody that's talking on a phone with a headset, that's the wrong website. FAFSA is free, okay? It's fafsa.gov, G-O-V. It's a government application. Why? Because the money that you're getting is from the federal and state government. And also, it is the most secure. If you are going to fafsa.com and you're filling it out, three-fourths of the way through, they're gonna ask for your credit card information. Cost about $100, okay? That's a middleman that's getting all your financial information, your socials, do not do that, okay? Let's move forward. It opens October the 1st, okay? That's basically it. I know some of you are very zealous and you say, well, we're gonna go home and do that tonight. Do not do that. It will be the wrong FAFSA. October 1st, FAFSA opens. I'm sure sometime, now we've already scheduled that. I will be coming to Lebanon High School, me and some great folks from Cumberland University. Yeah, tell me about it, Eddie Lovin. <laughs> and we're gonna be helping you guys fill out FAFSA. It'll be awesome, all right? But here's the thing. A parent and a student must be involved in this, not just, not just a parent. Sometimes parents decide they're going to fill out the FAFSA for their son or daughter. I get that. I'm the financial aid guy. I've got 10 kids. Believe me, I've done it. But a lot of times what happens is there's a student section and then there's a parent section, okay? And parents all the time are putting their social, their name in the student section. So do this together, okay? as we look. Also, you're going to be using income from the previous, previous year. What does that mean? If your son and daughter, you guys, your college year as a freshman is the 2021 school year. Does that freak anybody else out but me? And I'm still singing that Prince song, okay? <laughs> this, we're here, we are. So they need the 2018 tax return or income information that you guys just did. All right, let's move on. Here's what state money looks like. The HOPE Scholarship. Most of us know what that is, okay? The HOPE Scholarship, if you use it all four or even sometimes five years for all of your 150 semester credits to get a bachelor's degree, it is more than $16,000 in scholarships. Think about that. And to get the HOPE Scholarship, you have to you have to achieve a 21 composite score on the ACT. Some of you guys have done that already, all right? Also, we're taking the ACT again, right? For free! You guys know that it costs 50 bucks to take the ACT, but we're getting it for free. Tennessee is an ACT state. Take it again if you've already taken it. Take it three times, I promise. Better chance your score. They always take your highest score, okay? So, a 21 on the ACT, but if you don't get that, a 
3.0 GPA will get you the Hope Scholarship. That's a cumulative GPA. By cumulative, it has nothing to do with clouds. Your cumulative GPA is the very first semester of your freshman year to the eighth semester, your last semester as a senior. If that averages out on a uniform grading policy, all right, to 3.0, you will qualify for the Hope Scholarship as long as you do your fast. These two are supplemental. GAM stands for General Assembly Merit Scholarship. Basically, if you get a 29 on the ACT, good for you. You're going to get scholarships for that. And you have a 375, your HOPE scholarship will have an extra $1,000, okay? So as we look at a two-year institution like Ball State, the HOPE scholarship is $3,000. If you get it with GAMS, it is $4,000. Most community colleges like Ball State, full-time tuition, somewhere around four thousand three hundred dollars all right the last one over here is called the aspire award and the aspire award is for any student that qualifies for hope with a 21 or a 3.0 and their family has an adjusted gross income according to their tax return and fafsa of thirty six thousand or less they will get an extra five hundred dollars so three thousand five hundred if you qualify for both of these they're going to give you the bigger one which will be games all right at four-year colleges, it's more for tuition. So the Hope Scholarship is more. All right, the first two years, if you started a place like MTSU, okay, basically the Hope Scholarship, or let's say Cumberland University, Hope Scholarship is going to be $3,500 your first two years. And then the last two years, your junior and senior year, if you maintain that GPA, you need to keep your Hope Scholarship, you get an extra thousand those years. That's how it adds up, and it's wonderful. Games and Aspire are kind of the same thing. The only thing that's different about four-year schools and Aspire is it's not an extra $500. It's an extra $1,500. So, Hope with Aspire is a $5,000 scholarship. Wonderful, huh? All right, as we look forward, I want to talk about this one in the middle here. Some of you will be interested in going to a Tennessee College of Applied Technology. Let me just tell you. Do it, okay? My daughter Samantha, <laughs> Kevin Harrison is back there. My daughter Samantha went to a TCAT. She's making more money than all of them, all right? These are wonderful programs. Please go to the TCAT table and talk to Kevin Harrison. They have the most amazing programs. You're gonna hear a lot about that this year, but I mean, I'm telling you, this is not your typical college, and they work differently, okay? But you can go for free with something called Tennessee Promise. We're gonna talk about that as well. TSAA on the very far right is our grant from my office, the Tennessee Student Assistance Award. I'll tell you, at Cumberland University, that's a $4,000 grant because it's private. For other schools like MTSU, it's $2,000 that you can qualify for. And for community colleges and TCATs, it's a thousand extra dollars. All right, as we move on, let's talk about federal money. The Pell Grant now is $6,195. If you qualify for Pell and you want to start at a community college, you will have more money than you need to go to college. That's a wonderful thing, okay? It's need-based and it is FAFSA. FSEOG is just need-based things and it's money that, that colleges like UT Knoxville have for extreme need. And the last one is work-study. That's a great way to actually work on campus and get paid, okay? But it's through the federal government, all right? Now, as we look here, I just have to talk about this for a brief moment. Remember I said, student loans are, it is financial aid, and every one of you will qualify for at least $5,500 your first year. Every year they give you more money. That's how you get $27,000 in debt. Subsidized, if you qualify for it, basically means that interest will accrue, but the federal government is going to pay your interest while you're in college. You guys, there's a lot of different entities for student loans. Sally May, Perkins Loans. There are banks that give student loans. I would run away from those. This is the best deal that you can get. Oftentimes, you can have 10 years to pay this back, all right? You're borrowing money from the Federal Department of Education, not a bank, okay? Unsubsidized just basically means that it's going to accrue every year, okay? Every year that you're in college, that will accrue. But it will accrue on 4.29%. 4.29%. 4 
It's still a really good deal, all right? The only problem is if you do this every year and you keep doing it. Some of you won't need student loans, but you're gonna want to get them anyway because you need pizza. <laughs> you know what I mean? So just be wise about it. Parent plus loans I don't spend much time on because I don't want you to do it, all right? Parent plus loans means you can help your son or daughter get a loan, but it's in your name for them. It's not that great of an interest rate and you have to start paying it back immediately when your son is living in your basement playing World of Warcraft and you're still paying on that loan you got for him. This is my life. <laughs> Just think about it, all right? Because that is something if you're denied for, the only advantage to it is they will offer your son or daughter more money in their direct student loan. Okay, let's move forward. Let's talk about this one. Promise is the most wonderful thing. It is. And you know what? Parents, don't be alarmed. We want every one of your sons and daughters, you guys, we want you all to sign up for it. Because it is the ultimate backup plan. We all have plans, all right? Some of you right now plan to think about maybe where you want to go. Some of you know where you want to go, all right? But things happen and plans change. I'm telling you, if you start for two years, first two years at a place like Cumberland or Ball State, all right, and get all your basics out of the way and get an associate's degree, your tuition is free. Talk about avoiding student loans. That's incredible. My son Peyton is at Cumberland right now, and it is awesome for him. For Cumberland, using Tennessee Promise, you know, it's about 20,000 a year for tuition. So he's getting 40 grand free. Did y'all hear that? $40,000 in tuition free. I love that, you guys. Ball State's kind of the same thing. It's, the tuition's not that price, but saving money by having your tuition covered. It works like this, all right? The application opened August 1st and it closes November 1st. So we want you guys to sign up for it probably after the big college fair at Cumberland University. You guys are gonna come back here in the auditorium, line by line, we're gonna all fill that out. You're gonna get Chromebooks and you're gonna do it. It's a great opportunity. So do that. Then there's a few things you have to do as well. There's going to be a meeting here in school. You'll make that meeting. But there's a second meeting after Christmas usually in February, March, or April. We don't know when those meetings are yet, but at the first meeting, you're gonna get a green book, and it's gonna tell you when that meeting is. Parents, listen up. Go to these meetings with the second meeting. Go to that meeting with your, with your student, all right? Please do that, because you'll get to see everything and how it works. But you cannot go for your student. They take role. If you miss the meeting, that's a hard, fast deadline. Free college is over, all right? You also, the other thing, you must fill out your FAFSA. I'm gonna give you a deadline. February 1st is your deadline. If you do not fill out your FAFSA, you've got from October 1 to February 1st. If you screw around and do not fill out your FAFSA in that time, free college is over. It is. So listen, know that deadline. And you guys, I don't want you to miss a scholarship deadline. I do not want you to miss a scholarship deadline. So stay up front about that. You're going to be reminded over and over when those deadlines are, through your email, when you sign up for Promise, and your awesome guidance counselors will let you know. Main thing you have to do is read them, okay, and show up. Last thing you need to do is eight hours of community service. What is community service? Most of you know what it is. Some of you guys are beta club, your DECA, student council, things like that. You do senior project community service. There is a program where they want you to do 80 hours of community service. This is not that program, okay? This is eight hours, this is one day. Here's what community service is. You're working for an organization where there's a supervisor that has an email and you're not getting paid, okay? Our family, we're kind of a bond trap family, we sing. I know, can you imagine? <laughs> we go to long-term care facilities or nursing homes. We do that on several weekends and just visit with them. Play the guitar and sing, okay? Other things, your job is a great opportunity, maybe for scholarships, but you cannot 
clock out and work eight hours off the clock for community service. They don't let you do that. I guess they figured out some people were lying. I know. So here's the other thing. You can't do community service for a family member. All right? So mowing grandma's lawn is a great thing to do. It cannot be community service. Okay? And that's it. You have to turn that in. Anytime your community service needs to fall from November 2nd to July 1st. November 2nd of 2019 to July 1st of 2020. That's a long time to be able to do that. Right, let's move on. And let's just get past this too. It's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Private sources of aid are very cool. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about. And then I'm going to do something really weird. Okay? Private sources of aid is the way we found to get the extra money. And our family is crazy because I'm the financial aid guy, okay? So private source of aid you can find from your school counselors. In fact, they have national scholarships they can tell you about, but after Christmas, usually February and March, that's right, Ms. Courtney, you guys, Mr. Denton, you guys start getting in scholarships for Wilson County students, all right? There's quite a few high schools here, but you know what? Most people don't do these scholarships. And they're, they're $3,000, $5,000. From our guidance counselors at Mount Juliet High School, where my kids go, all right, we found Middle Tennessee Electric Scholarship. We found one called Sisters of Mercy. And it was my son, huh? Go figure. You, all you, most of the time, what you do is you fill out a profile or, or you write an essay, okay? I know, you're going, kill me now, dude. I'm not gonna write an essay. Listen, the essay is about you. It's a brag letter. For those of you who take 28 selfies a minute, you can do this, all right? Who's your hero? It's things like that. They are not asking you to explain Einstein's theory of relativity. It's a brag letter about you. You spell check, take it to your English teacher, but do these things, okay? There's also a website called fastweb.com, and our family has done this every year. We found $6,000 one year, $4,000 another, and $500 for the last. Okay, what, a couple of years we didn't get anything from FastWeb. It's national scholarships, and basically here's what it is. You go to fastweb.com, it's a search engine. Do not, <laughs> hear me, hear me, don't do a Google search for scholarships. You will have a million websites to navigate through. All right, so do this instead. Students, you guys fill out a profile about yourself. They may ask you questions like, are you right or left-handed, okay? Why would they do that? Because there's left-handed scholarships. All right? So here's some of the crazy ones our family has done. My daughter Samantha did this one, okay? I know that guy does not look like a high school senior, but he is, all right, in his day. They made that prom tux and that prom dress out of duct tape. It's not just silver anymore. Ladies, you're not gonna make your prom dress out of duct tape. You're not gonna do it. I know you're gonna spend $250 on your prom dress, but here's the thing. If you do that and have your picture made, then put your regular dress on. It's a wonderful opportunity. It's $5,000. They give a lot of it away. The next one, my son Peyton, what is that? Okay? And gentlemen, that is a Klingon. I know. Now, Star Trek is way, 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 way a long time ago. But this is a neat national scholarship that Peyton decided he was going to figure out how to do. Okay? All you have to do is write an essay about yourself, about 350 words. It's a very short essay. You just have to write it in Klingon. <laughs> if you can do that, you are a nerd. You are, own it, own your nerd. Peyton found a Klingon translator through Google and it was pretty easy for him. Last one, all right, listen here. This is a judge-free zone. Please do not judge me. I am not, parents, hear me, I am not telling you what to let your kids watch on television on Sunday nights or whenever things like this come on. That is relational television in our family, but we are sick people, okay? If you know what five things you need to survive the zombie apocalypse, you can get $1,500 and they give a lot of this away. Just know, the deadline is October 31st. Go figure, <laughs> okay? So hey, I, I'm telling you these because we're crazy enough to do this stuff. And you can be crazy too. Now, you guys will have some questions for me, all right? You will, we'll have some questions about 
this whole FAFSA process, and I get it. There's lots of things. I'll talk to you about that. I don't take big questions anymore in, in big meetings for several reasons. I usually say, are there any questions? And this is what I give. Yeah, uh, her father is worthless and he doesn't pay child support. Do I have to list him on the FAFSA? You know, things like that. We don't need to know that. You know? Uh, my parents are first cousins. Is there a scholarship for that? Yeah, okay. I was going to say, do your parents play the banjo? Anyway. So I'm gonna hang around afterwards, go ahead, Austin, and take questions from you guys. There are personal ones. Last thing I wanna talk about is social media. Here's the thing, get on social media, look at the colleges you wanna do. Get on, do virtual tours, go to them. Clean up your social media if you're gonna get scholarships. Because I worked at colleges before I worked for the government. And great, wonderful students, beautiful students, had great GPAs, had wonderful ACT scores and SAT scores, had wonderful letters of recommendation. They all had the same 4.0 GPA. So how did we decide who was gonna get the provost or the leadership scholarships? We had to get on your social media, all right? You know how I can do that now? Google lets me do that. I'm serious, I get to see your Instaface stuff. I know, I know what it's called. By the way, you guys don't do Facebook anymore. It's for old people, right? Yep. Yeah, I know, I know. But here's the thing, clean that stuff up. There are some things that I can never unsee. <laughs> All right, so present yourself well. Your email address, oh my gosh, please. Please, if your email address is sexygirl580, please. Please don't do that, do not do that. Your name, I was helping a student in Putnam County at one of the schools. His father's a pastor. At Union University, there is Baptist scholarships. If your father's a pastor, you have the right GPA, you apply by the deadline, there's that word again, all right? So he said, can you, I helped him fill out his FAFSA. He said, can you help me fill out my college application? I wanted to say, dude, I got some bad news about the next four years of your life if you can't fill out a college application. But I helped him to get this scholarship. We go to his email address, and it is, his email address was sexy69. I know. I said, you're not getting any Baptist money, pal. All right, so listen, clean that stuff up, present yourself well. Last thing, that is my contact information. Now, I'm gonna do something really weird. Year after year after year after year, this won't take long, all right? But every year, I meet awesome families, awesome students. And we have these meetings. And then they call me because you guys got my number. And you missed a meeting, you missed a deadline, okay? You didn't know that it opened in October, but yet we've been telling you this stuff. So I started thinking, how can I get this stuck in your head? How can I do that? What will make this get stuck in your head like a bad Britney Spears song that you cannot stand, but it won't leave your head? Remember when that song came out? Because I'm happy. I was like, shut up! It was stuck in my head. All right? Y'all are going to hate me for this. You are. And I'm sorry in advance. Here's the deal. I know, this is weird. But it's kind of an experiment. If this can help you remember... I'm gonna do it. This is a guitar! <laughs> Hello, can you hear me now? This is my guitar. I'm dumb. I don't want anybody to be afraid. I have stump boxes at my feet. Reverb! That sound like me singing three-part harmony. When I'm singing like this, you see what I'm saying? So it's singing along with me. So I don't want you to think, who's singing with that boy? Alright? <laughs> Once again, if I can get this stuck in your head. Like a bad boy band song. It's actually not a bad song. You're gonna be asleep tonight, you're gonna wake up, this is gonna be in your head. 
Let's do this. pertains to your seniors. Um, like I said, we have just a little bit of information we want to get out to you guys about dates and important things coming up here for specifically Lebanon high school students. Um, first thing this year, we are revamping our social media. We are so hopeful. Um, students, you guys can follow us. Parents, if y'all have social media, please jump on as well. We're going to be using all three of these platforms to try and push out information. So like Mr. Mullins was saying, when we have those scholarships available in guidance, this is how we will advertise them. We will make announcements here at school, but students can attest you don't always hear those. Uh, parents, those don't always get communicated to you guys. So, um, and I will also tell you guys this uh, PowerPoint will be available on the counseling webpage tomorrow. So don't feel super rushed to get every single detail down. All right, so the first slide up here are important dates. So these are some important dates that we have coming up. Um, college fair, I know you heard Sam mention that. We are hosting a college fair, or Cumberland is hosting a college fair for our students. Um, it is an opportunity during the school day for our students to be able to go and be exposed um, to about 80 different post-secondary um, options, different colleges, different TCATs, things like that. We have permission forms. If you guys grab those forms on the way in, one of those is that permission form. It's on that um, salmon piece of colored paper. Please fill that out and have your student return that. The deadline to turn those in is Friday the 13th of September. Um, the college fair is on September the 20th. It'll be during the school day. We'll send them on buses, all of those good things. The ASVAB, um, that is a free test that we offer here. Um, it is a vocational battery test, so basically students take it and it's testing them on different things um, than just the ACT. When you get the results back, it's an opportunity to learn about some different careers that they might be really good at. Like I said, it's totally free. It's during the school day. That'll be on September 26th. We love to see our seniors take that. Um, FAFSA Frenzy, that's something else that you heard Sam mention. He will be coming back. There will be several other people here as well. Um, the FAFSA is done online, it is done on a computer, and it can be a pretty complicated document. So please feel free to come in that night, get that taken care of. Um, we just ask that you bring your 2018 tax return so that we can get that situated. It'll be from five to eight in our library here on the 22nd of October. We do have that free ACT retake. So all of our seniors, you guys will be taking the ACT again. It's during the school day. You don't have to register for it. Um, and that is going to be on Tuesday the 29th. Lastly, graduation. Saturday, 
May the 23rd, so mark your calendars. That's why we're all here. These are other ACT dates. So these are the national test dates. Um, you heard Sam say it, I'll say it again. Take the ACT again, you guys. This is a great opportunity to get more scholarship money um, just by taking the ACT. The one that we have here, like I said, there's no need to register for it, but these national test dates, those are offered here at school on Saturdays. Um, those do cost $52. You register online. We'd be happy to help your student register if they do need assistance with that. The important things I will note if you are taking it on a Saturday seniors bring your own calculator calculators are not provided okay and y'all know how tough math can be if you don't have that calculator all right so deadlines that is the biggest takeaway I hope you guys get from tonight please 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 be aware of deadlines in case you missed it um, Sam was talking about some of those deadlines financial aid deadlines are always before school deadlines so for example if you want to go to UT Knoxville and you want their financial aid you have to apply by November 1st that is a firm deadline if you miss that date you don't get that money okay so please be checking deadlines be aware of them um, when you're applying, just some things to think about, things that you're gonna need. Um, application fee, colleges do have fees to apply to them. So that's something sometimes you need to budget for. Um, they're gonna need transcripts. We have those in guidance. Some of them also require recommendation letters. So for transcripts and recommendation letters, this is something we get a lot of questions about. Like I said, once you've filled out that online application, it's gonna come back and tell you guys that you need a couple things. Um, your ACT scores and your transcripts are the two must-haves, and some schools also require recommendation letters. So all of those things are requested down in guidance. Um, for your transcript, all we need for you to do is fill out your name, where you need your school to be sent, and we send it directly to them. If you go online through our counseling website, you'll see a tab that says transcripts that is for former students it costs two dollars you do not need to pay for a transcript as a current student so please 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 do not pay for a transcript while you are a student um, also on your transcripts are your ACT scores so we are automatically sending that to colleges on your behalf as well the last thing I will mention are recommendation letters. There are a lot of scholarships that require these, often a counselor recommendation letter as well as a teacher recommendation letter. Um, please just be mindful when you are requesting these. Your teachers, especially a lot of our senior teachers, have anywhere between 20 and 30 students asking for these letters at a time. So if you go to them the day before it's due and ask them for a recommendation letter, um, there's a good chance that it's not really gonna highlight all the wonderful things about you guys. So. Be mindful of those deadlines. Give them enough time to write a letter that truly reflects and highlights all of your strengths. We do like to highlight the common application as you guys are starting to talk about college applications. I mentioned college fees. Um, the common application, if you've never heard of it or explored it, I would encourage you to go home, spend some time researching what this is. This is one giant database um, where a lot of schools came together and realized that there was a problem that students were filling out the same information five, ten times. And so what they've done, you create one account with the common application. You enter all of your information one time. And there are um, hundreds of schools that are on this database. So you make your one application and you select which schools you would like to apply from. You don't have to fill out your name and your address and your email over and over and over. Um, this is a really helpful way. You can explore different colleges this way. You can explore their deadlines. And it's just one great universal tool that students um, have really benefited from. I'm going to skip over Tennessee Promise. I know Sam talked about that. Um, this will be on our website. Important dates as they pertain to Lebanon High School students though. All right, so these are those hard and firm deadlines. Students, I need you to know these are not our deadlines. These are Tennessee Promise deadlines. And inevitably, every year we have a student, honest to goodness, that comes down crying the day after a meeting because they've missed the meeting. And there is nothing we can do to help. All right, so we already have the dates. Put them on your calendar. Saying that you have to work, unfortunately, is not considered an excuse to miss these meetings. Um, October 22nd is the first Tennessee Promise meeting. It happens here during the school day. That's when they're gonna give out those um, booklets to you guys, answer any questions you'll have, kind of just talk about Tennessee Promise. Um, the second meeting will happen on March 3rd. So that's March 3rd, 2020. It's in our auditor, nope, in our cafeteria. Um, 
It says 5.30, they've also told us 4.30, so just keep posted. They'll clarify at that meeting exactly what time it starts, but know that it is on that date. It is on March 3rd. That is required. The student must attend. The parent cannot attend on your child's behalf, so the student must be there. Um, once again, you have to complete the application by November 1st. We will be working with students to help make sure that this deadline doesn't um, fall to the wayside. But if you guys want to go on, go ahead and apply for it by all means. It is a very easy application to complete. And then the FAFSA deadline is February 1st. Um, and then again, the eight hours of community service. So one day of community service between that November 1st as, uh, through July 1st to get that done. Um, once again, this is going to be on our website, but these are some other databases that we have found that can be pretty helpful as search engines um, as you are starting to find money um, for your student to pay for college. Um, CollegeForTN.org is a great resource. Even if you're not considering staying in state, that is fine. I would still encourage you to go on this website, create an account. They have got all kinds of great tests career interest inventories, learning style tests. Um, they have a whole page of different college lingo. So kind of like Mr. Mullins had that page up of all those acronyms. They've got a page that explains what all of those things are. It's just a lot of new information, especially um, if you're a first generation student or maybe you're the first in your family uh, to go to college. So it can be a very helpful tool. Um, Fast Web, you discussed. Unigo is another really big database. Um, Local scholarships, that's kind of what he was talking about. We will have scholarships available just to Wilson County students. Um, they will be in the guidance office. Typically, they, we get them in February and March. So be listening for those. Again, we will blast those out on our social media platforms. Please come down and apply, y'all. Two years ago, we had one scholarship for just Lebanon High School students, and we had zero applicants. We begged people to apply, and people didn't want to write an essay for free money. Okay, please come down and see if you're eligible for these and apply for them, okay? Um, and then the last thing we always encourage, um, students, if you are employed, check with your employer. Parents, check with your employers. Check with whoever you bank with. Check with your church. Check with any community organizations you are a member of. See if there is money there. And they may say no, but they may also say yes. Please just check with these different things that you're involved in to see if there's any money there for your students. Okay, so we did want to highlight the senior trip. That is something that we are doing this year. It is new. Ms. Carney is here, um, and she wanted to briefly talk with you guys about this opportunity. She will also be here afterwards to answer questions um, that you guys have about this also. Oh, do you want, I can, she's going to pass some stuff out. Um, so what you guys need to know about senior trips. So there will be a senior trip this year to Disney World and Universal Studios. It is going to be between April 22nd and 26th. The important thing is to note, students, you cannot be failing any classes that year. You can't have any out-of-school suspension, and you can't have any truancy concerns. You have to be coming to school. Um, this is something I, I want to, I'm Ms. Carney. I'm new here. I am a pipeline assistant principal, and I came here for Wilson Central. I was a teacher there for 17 years. We did this trip at Wilson Central last year, and it was very successful. Kids loved it, um, and it's the lady from Thomas Travel, Suzanne, Susan, I'm sorry, is here to talk to you if you have questions as well. Um, we leave on Wednesday the 22nd. We get back on Sunday the 26th. They go to all four parks, and then we go to Grad Bash at Universal Studios on, I think it's Friday night if I'm, I, I'm remembering the schedule. We go to Grad Bash at Universal Studios and that's from 6 p.m. till 2 a.m. in the morning. Then we go back to, and we're staying on Disney property at Pop Century. Um, everything is inclusive except for part of their meals. They get one food coupon per day that we're at Disney, on Disney property. And then they have to bring money to pay for their other meals. Um, trying to think, and they have to bring money obviously for their souvenirs. We travel via Wise Coach. We get down there, check into Pop Century, sleep, get up early, go to the first Disney park on Thursday morning, switch parks Thursday and go Thursday afternoon and stay until it closes. Then we go back to the hotel, sleep, get up, go to a Disney park, go back to the hotel and change, 
eat and then get on a bus and go back to go back to Universal. Then we're there till 2 a.m. Go back to the hotel, sleep, and then we get on. We go to Disney Park, our last Disney Park, on Saturday morning or Saturday 11ish. Stay there until it closes, and then get on a bus and come back home. Um, and this is Miss um, Susan from Thomas Tours, and she can tell you a little bit more. Thank you so much for having me. Um, we are trying to get the brochures distributed. They're kind of coming from the outside in. Um, I do have extras in case there are still sections that do not have them. So uh, there's more up front. If you need one, raise your hand and I will get someone to help get them distributed. Um, again, I get to talk about the fun stuff. It's so uh, overwhelming the senior year with all the deadlines and the dates. So the senior trip is a fun aspect of the year to talk about. Again, you've noted the date, April 22nd through the 26th. Ms. Carney's explained the basic itinerary to you. I'm not gonna sit and read this to you word for word. The main thing that I want to point out as far as the itinerary is that we are attending Grad Bash. That is the highlight of the trip. Well, actually there's several highlights, but the main highlight is Grad Bash. Grad Bash is a private event for seniors only from throughout the United States. And basically they close the Universal Parks to outside guests from 7 p.m. until about 2 a.m. the next morning. It provides an atmosphere for the students, so it's specifically for high school seniors, and it is a drug-free, alcohol-free environment. They do check as the students enter. Um, again, Ms. Carney went last year with Wilson Central, and I think she raved about it. <laughs> they all had a wonderful experience. It was their first time to go last year. So they are actually planning to go again this year as well because they were so impressed by, by the event. Um, again, the nice thing about it is not only is it a private event for high school seniors, so it allows them the exclusive use of both Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure, which are the two theme parks owned by the Universal Orlando Resorts. But it also has different sections of entertainment. They'll have bands and DJs set up throughout the parks. So their students are able to enjoy both the rides as well as bands, DJs. Um, they'll have uh, dancing in certain areas. It's a lot of fun. And again, it's just an exclusive event for them. Uh, the other highlight to the trip. This trip, you're getting six parks in in the time frame that we're there. So they will obviously get to go to both the Universal Parks, as I pointed out, but they'll also be able to attend all four of the Walt Disney World theme parks. So Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Disney's Hollywood Studios, as well as the Animal Kingdom. And of course, the big feature this year with Hollywood Studios is the opening of the Star Wars themed area. So that's, that's gonna be the big excitement to the Walt Disney World Parks this year. So again, I'm not gonna sit and read the itinerary to you. It's very self-explanatory. Um, I can tell you, if you're looking at the itinerary, the things to kind of point out and note, anywhere it says lunch on own, dinner on own, it means that particular meal is not covered in the package prices that are listed. So parents, when you're studying this with your student a little bit later and you're trying to determine, okay, do we want to invest in the trip? Just kind of look to see, okay, we'll probably need this much extra money as spending money on top of the package price. I always like to point that out to you so you can kind of get the total picture of what to expect with the trip and the cost for the trip, the budget for the trip. So, um, as far as what's included, you can see that at the top of the itinerary. We do have motor coach transportation with Wise Coaches, which is a local operator. I know you all have probably seen their equipment on the road. Uh, these are the nice luxury motor coaches with the Wi-Fi and the outlets and um, the high reclining seats. So very comfortable ride. Uh, we do have three nights hotel accommodations on Disney property. So we are gonna be staying at the Pop Century Resort, which is on their property. So it's, 
It's nice, easy access. As a matter of fact, there'll be several times the students just take Disney transportation to go from the hotel to the parks. And then again, I pointed out that we will have uh, the capability to see all four Walt Disney World parks. We do have a three-day park hopper ticket, as well as that grad bash admission ticket, which lets us into both Islands of Adventure and Universal Studios. There are three meal coupons that are included in the package. So three meals are included. Those are basically vouchers that they get to use one each day in the Walt Disney World parks. So it is a good value. It provides an entree beverage. Um, it, it's a good value. It actually works out better than purchasing out of pocket. So those are included. They are on their own. Like I said, anywhere it says own, own, they're on their own for those meals. Breakfasts, they are on their own. But usually what we found is a lot of the students just kind of go down and grab a bagel. I know that's probably what they did last year on the trip. They often don't sit down and have a full breakfast. They just kind of grab and go cereal or bagel, whatever is quick and easy because they want to get into the parks that day. Plus, they want to sleep as long as they can, so they often don't want to take as much time to get up and eat breakfast. Um, there is a person from Thomas Tours, I always point this out, that goes with the group as well, and that person's job is basically to run the logistics of the trip. That way, Ms. Carney is not worrying about anything but chaperoning, and that person checks the group in and makes sure the driver knows where to get from A to B. They are with the group from start to finish. So, any questions just kind of with pointing out the itinerary and what's included? Okay. Um, again, this is a great trip. We used to have a DVD for it, so. Unfortunately, they don't send out the DVDs anymore, so the ones I have are very outdated, really don't apply. Uh, as far as the price per person, you'll notice on the back of the first page it says $1,195. That is the price for a student to stay four to a room. All of our student groups stay four to a room. That's the most economical way to travel. Um, and it's for everything that is listed on the front. Now, we do realize that that's quite an investment, especially on your senior year, because senior year has senior pictures and college application fees and everything. We truly do understand it. As a matter of fact, I just went through it a year or two ago myself. So, what we have done is we've set it up on a payment plan. So, if you are interested in going, we have divided the trip costs it looks like about mm, five payments that we've got set up. So, and they're roughly about $239 each. So the first deposit of $239 is due October the 4th, and then basically it's just every month thereafter. So November 1st for the second payment. The third payment is due December 6th. Then we skip over to January 10th. And then the final payment is due on February the 7th. The most important payment is that first payment because it lets us know how many students we've got signed up, if we've got enough hotel rooms, that we are good to go with traveling. So that's the most important payment. However, after that initial payment, if you need to modify the schedule of parents, that's usually not a problem. Our accountant is incredible. He works with parents all the time about payment plans. So you can just call the office and ask to speak with Warren. He is our accountant. And maybe you get paid on a different date from what's listed under our payment schedule. That's fine. He will work with you to make it work. To make it work. That's the, the long term go. So we want as many students as possible to go. Uh, the adults that will be traveling will be school-sponsored chaperones. I would like to point that out. And if you would like to, I don't know, Ms. Carney, you want to add anything about that? Um, no, the biggest thing is when you make your payments, you make your payments directly yes. to Thomas Travel. We don't do any of the money here, and they keep me, they'll keep me updated on students that are signed up so that I know who's signed up and that they've made their payments and that how many we've got going. Yes. Yes, and that was, I was going to get to that next. Um, as far as payments go, they do come directly to Thomas Tours. They don't come to the school. 
Uh, you can either do the traditional method. You notice there are payment slips that are attached to the back of the brochure. You start with the first form. It says a reservation form. You complete that, mail it with a check made payable to Thomas Tours, and then just keep working your way up. If you would like to pay by credit card, you certainly can do so. We're not set up online just yet. We're still trying to get that worked out. However, you can call into the office. Our phone number is on the front page. Just say that you'd like to make a credit card payment or a debit card payment, either one. There is a 3% processing fee if you would like to use debit card or credit card. So, and then of course, if you work in Nashville, we're open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 5. You can always come in and pay by cash. You can also mail in a cashier's check or a money order. Any questions about payments? I'm trying to squeeze in a lot into a little time frame because I know a lot of people have to head home. Questions? If you can't think of anything right now, which is usually the case with me, I'll get in the car and go, oh, I should have asked this. You can always call Thomas Tours, and the phone number again is on the front page. Uh, my name is Susan, I'm the only Susan in the office, so you can track me down. And you can feel free to call, ask me any questions that you might have. You can also call Ms. Carney at the school or email, ask her, and she'll be glad to answer you or ask me and get back with you, either one. All right, guys, so a few things for you guys to take home. If you didn't grab them on your way in, we have several different papers. Um, first thing on this sheet of paper is that permission form for your student to attend the college fair. Um, again, this is required. Students cannot transport themselves, so please grab one of these. Um, we have got on this gold sheet of paper, this is just kind of a calendar. It's got a lot of those important dates on there that we talked about, um, different things coming up. It kind of helps you keep it um, organized going from month to month throughout senior year and then the last sheet we have is this purple sheet it's kind of our cheat sheet to help break down Tennessee Promise Hope Scholarship and Tennessee Scholars um, so hopefully it will help you guys answer any questions uh, that you guys have about that and lastly I know you guys all have questions every single senior will leave us and go and do something different um, so if you want to set up a, a meeting with your child's counselor please 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 utilize us um, we would love to help walk through this season with you guys that is what we're here for um, feel free to call shoot us an email we'll be here tonight until about 7 30 um, like I said we are here to help y'all answer questions that you guys have um, but other than that I know that there are several colleges and post-secondary um, opportunities out in the Commons they're gonna be here till about 7 30 as well uh, but thank you all so much for coming out tonight if y'all need anything just let us know